Larry Mednick here. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take this wing off and we're going to bag it. So this trike is going out of the country and uh, we need to do more than just fold the wing onto the trike. We're going to literally remove the wing and uh, very importantly we're going to show you exactly how to pad things that need to be padded and uh, every step of the way so that uh, you can do this uh, on your own without damaging the wing or having any wear on the wing hopefully if it's uh, done correctly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install our gas charge mast lift assist and of course that's going to help us to lower the wing down to the ground and we'll put this on both sides and then the next thing that we're going to need to do after this is we're going to have to disconnect our light so we've got a light down here go ahead and unplug that we can flip these two lights up that'll get them out of the way when i pull that speed pin I'm going to climb up here and I'm going to disconnect my light here, pull that apart. I can go ahead and pull these two speed pins and now I can That's part of the windshield. pull this speed pin here and then it's important where you grab the uh, The pin was gauge. down here. If you hold too low, it won't want to come. So you have to kind of find the right spot and it should slide off just that easy. And then what you're going to do is set this aside out of the way. But in this case, we're going into the bag. So we're going to remove our quick. And I'm going to just reassemble this. And I'm going to set these aside. Go ahead and lock this brake. I'm going to push down with my hand, lock the brake. Very, very important that the brake is locked. At this point, I had the uh, control bar tied back. I can unseat belt that. And if you're out in the wind, you want to make sure this doesn't blow around too much. And then we're going to go ahead and pull our speed pins. Pull that one, pull that one. And you don't that really have release, to worry That about, releases the mast. You don't have to worry about uh, the mast falling down. Um, one, it's uh, balanced. And two, once it gets down to about here, the mast lift assist is engaged. And I have to pull the wing down at this point. So I'm very carefully looking and trying not to hit propellers and wings. And it looks like I'm going to be okay, go nice and slow. Bring the wing down. So now the wing is down, I can go ahead and remove the nose cone. And at this point, I'm going to want to go ahead, it's just at a great height for me to be able to uh, start uh, undoing the wing. So uh, we're going to pull some battens out of this. The first battens that you want to take out are going to be the tip battens. So you have the lower one slides right out. And then we're going to take out our spring-loaded batten. And then once that's out, we can undo our bungee cords across the back. And if you like, you can pull your undersurface out now. And make sure you double check because one is usually sneaky and gets stuck in there. I think we got them all. Next, we want to bring our sprogs in. I'm just going to unvelcro that. And then these on the rival X are going to go towards each other. So I have to lift the trailing edge up to swing it in. Now I'm really at a good height where I can get to these strings pretty fast. And what I'm doing is I'm just getting the strings off and I'll come back to pull the battens because I like to pull the battens two at a time. It's just a time saving. But before you can pull the battens out, you can pull out a few on the tips. You're going to want to detension the wing. And before we can do that, I need to go do the exact same thing to the other side. And I can detension the wing and use my thumb like a lever. You use this finger to bring the gate down. And one, two, off it goes. I'm going to go ahead and pull this antenna off now as well. The antenna is also something that would normally stay on when you're folding 
the wing, you wouldn't have to disconnect the antenna here, like so. And then we'll go ahead and pull this completely off. But uh, when you're folding it on the trike, all of this stays on. So go ahead and pull this little, little ring here. Yep. And then we're going to just go ahead and push that pin out. And go ahead and pull the pin. And now we've got our whole antenna assembly. And we'll go ahead and put this pin back in with the safety so we don't lose any of it. And I'll set it down with our other items. So at this stage, the wing's detention, which means we can pull battens. And uh, you don't want to go too fast, but coming out, you can definitely go out faster than you can go in. And uh, you know, you got two hands, you might as well pull two battens at a time. So this goes very, very quickly. Start a pile of upper surface battens here. And there are a lot on our high performance wing. So we would have been done a long time ago had this been a single surface quick fold wing. And then our last two, that is 14 battens. And it's exactly twice the number of battens that you'll find on a quick fold wing. And of course the uh, under surface battens, none of those exist on the quick fold wing. We have one right here in red. You can see a huge difference in, uh, in these two wings. Now the advantage to the quick fold wing, obviously, is that it folds very quick. It's simple. Uh, they actually fly very, very nice. The high performance wing that we're working on has basically efficiency, payload, and speed range. And those are its attributes. Folding, not really one of them when you compare the two. But even so, this is quick enough that if you want to you know, remove the extra battens and uh, put it in a trailer, it's not a real big deal. But uh, now, even with the detention, do you always start from the outside in? I like to start from the outside in. Uh, what we're doing is, as we're pulling the battens out, the fabric is getting looser and looser. And as these battens get longer and longer, the camber is getting larger and larger. So, take a look at what's happening to the fabric as I deform the fabric as I pull the batten out. And so, the looser it's the fabric a lot is. More the looser the fabric is, the easier the large camber can slide through the loose sail. So if you were to take this off in the opposite direction, we wouldn't have all this slack as we're getting to the big battens. So when you're building it, you always want to start with the big ones. And when you're taking it apart, you always want to start with the small ones. So everything's just opposite. And I figured it was worthwhile. We have the video already posted on how to put the wing together, but you know, it's good to have one to pull it apart because reversing the order can get a little bit confusing when there's this many steps. I'm gonna go ahead and unzip the bottom of the wing here. And in some cases, you may wanna take the trim motor out before you detension it. I think we'll be just fine getting it out either way. I'm gonna come over here, and the first thing I've gotta do is take this little safety ring off. And once my safety ring is removed, I can go ahead and take off this little nut. And then once it's removed, I can take out this here, and I can reach up and remove the trim motor. And at this point, the plug is velcroed in so you want to make sure you remove the velcro and now that's just kind of hanging there and now I can access this pin very easily and now this next step is very important I'm gonna go ahead and set this down we've got this uh, trim cable and if you come in here and take a look you'll see that we're tied up in the cross tube strap so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fish this out you can actually lift this so that uh, you can pull this out of the ca of the uh, black uh, cross tube strap and then that's it. This is out of the way and uh, You just got to make sure that you don't leave it through there because it will hang up on that This is going to travel all the way forward when we fold the wing And so now we can go ahead and remove the nose ribs again This is another step normally you wouldn't do this unless you were bagging the wing you actually don't have to 
remove the nose ribs if you're bagging the wing, but we're gonna go ahead and do that in this case. And I'm gonna stow the nose cone in the leading edge. Right, so now we've got a safety on this castle nut here. And uh, I grabbed a wrench, but I didn't really need it. Take this off. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of reconnect this. I'm gonna get it back from around the wing. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to put as much hardware back as I can. That way we're not looking for it. Like this washer in my hand. Uh, we're not looking for it, uh, you know, a month down the road when we go to reassemble this. And then just go ahead and put our safety back in, like so. And then same thing here with our Jesus bolt. Remove our safety. This one I'm definitely gonna need a wrench for. So we're gonna go ahead and that's about it. So it's not crazy tight. Now I can go with my finger. And for the time being, I'll set this down in the passenger or pilot seat. And uh, now we're gonna have to secure the mast because the mast wants to rise. And to get this wing off, now the wing is gonna have to tilt forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this hangar door so that we have the space. Three useful tools, we got a mallet, we got a pretty good sized Phillips screwdriver, and uh, this is our little ratchet rope. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna kinda secure the mast to the front forks, and I'm gonna try to make sure I don't put anything metal on anything metal, so I'm gonna just loop this around. And then I'll connect this, and the problem is when I remove the wing, the mast is gonna wanna go up, so I wanna hold that mass down and now I can just very carefully tap our hang bolt and now two things are going to happen one this is going to help me to tap that uh, Jesus bolt out but it's also going to keep everything connected as I remove the uh, the hang bolt Now, everything's still all together, but what I've just done without this, this whole wing could fall down. So this in here is very, very important. And uh, we wanna just double check, make sure the antenna's off, the uh, trim cable is off, the Jesus strap is off, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to separate the hang block from the mast. Uh, I could loosen up these five bolts, which will make it real easy, or I can uh, just pull them apart. And uh, then I'm going to set the wing down onto its nose. All right, so 916 socket wrenches. And here we go. We're going to loosen up the first one. And uh, not a lot, you know, one, two, three, four, something like that. Maybe a little bit more. And you'll see just a, a little bit makes a lot of difference in the tension. And this next bolt, you're gonna kind of see things shift if you look closely, because this is still kind of holding it. And there it goes, see it just moved. That means it's ready to come apart now. So when I move this screwdriver, let's see. The wing just fell backwards. Yep. And now I'm gonna pull the wing down, nice and slow. And if you come out to the front of the wing here, you can do a much better job of watching and making sure the wing tips are not going to hit anything. And so once this is separated, now we can go get our carriage and move it out of the way. So at this point, I can release the mast, release the brake. Now, if you're going into a trailer, you may need to keep the mast down and uh, you could just leave this on. Or if you remove the mast lift assist, you can pad out the top of the mast and that'll come down to the top of the forks and uh, you can just tie it down that way. Uh, so your choice, but um, this will be the highest point 
of the entire carriage and if you need to lose another inch or so you can simply remove this pin here and slide this off and then it'll be about this high which is less than six foot six so that should get into pretty much any standard car hauler trailer and right now he's just putting all the hardware back in and reconnecting the mast Slide that in first and then connect at the bottom. Yeah, a little trick. You stick this in upside down and now I don't have to sit there and hold it while I get my other two pins in. So we come over here, get down to eye level here. You got to rotate this and the whole lines up. Right there. Put that pin in like that. You put your lights back down. And somewhere in my pile here is gonna be my third speed pin. This will go in from the top. Now switch this one from bottom to top. Now our roll cage is reinstalled if that's what we're doing with it. Okay, so this is where having two or three people would really help. One person to lift the nose of the wing up would be super easy, but there's just two of us. I've just got Amy helping me today. So I am going to have Amy stand about eight or 10 feet behind the wing tip. I'm going to tilt the wing off of its nose. Amy's going to catch a wing tip. I'm going to go to this wing tip and then we're going to fold the wing together. Here we go. So you can just basically grab either one of the cables, both of them, give it a little pull. Work your way over to the wing tip and then walk towards each other at the same time. Go ahead and step down. And bring the fabric to the outside. That's the way it's good. We have not closed the wing all the way together. In fact, this wing does not close all the way together with the wing struts installed. Remember, it's made to straddle the revolt. So the wing tips are gonna be six, eight feet apart, roughly, when you fold it on the trike. So we've stopped, we've left about 10 or 12 feet between the wing tips, and our next step is gonna to be to remove the wing struts. So a quick little trick, uh, kind of for getting the bolt out, is I put the control bar up on my foot, just gives me a little bit of working room here, and then you just remove this nut here, slide your bolt out, and it should come right apart like that. And you go to the inside, and we can put our hardware back into the wing strut. Now our safety is going to be attached to the wing. That'll stay with the A-frame. So just like that. And we'll do the other side. We've got this one here and this one here. And what that's going to do is that's going to expose our connection. I'm going to slide this around almost about 90 degrees and what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to remove this pin that is front to back. Obviously you can't get a pin out that's front to back, it'll hit that. And then I'm going to put this back together again, I'm going to put my ring through and now all my hardware for my wing strut is on my wing strut. I'm going to set that aside. Now if you notice the wing sail as we folded it, his gathered in the center. Before we roll this wing up, the wing is gonna to go to the outside. So that gets confusing a lot of times if you've never rolled up a wing. So this fabric, you're gonna come up over the leading edge. And then uh, once we bring the wing tips together, we'll be able to roll all that up. Now we get the wing struts off, and what that means is that we can bring the wings in uh, now I can't just bring one wing in, uh, just like when we're folding the whole wing, it has to come in together. You can go one a little bit, then the other. The problem is when the wing is all the way open, uh, the wing won't stay as you close it. So you can't move one wing and then the other because it'll just open back up again. And now I can reach them both. I can bring them together. Something also very important is I'm keeping this keel low. I can bring the keel up where it's in the way of the wing. We're gonna just drop the back of the keel a little bit. And now, we've got all this fabric that's inside of the leading edge. 
I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. And when you've got all of it, you're gonna be able to see, it's almost like folding a paper airplane. That nice 90 degree, and I'm gonna start rolling. That helps it a little bit. These double surface don't roll up that great. And then pull the leading edge up. And we're gonna tie this right here. So go ahead, whoop, secure this. You don't have to make it overly tight or anything, just enough to hold this. And this is like an envelope. So that's gonna just really let everything tuck in very nicely. And then we have a tip boot with a Velcro. We can tidy up this area down here that didn't quite roll with the rest of the way. And the tip boot should hold this area rolled up together nicely. And we'll do the same exact thing on the other side. There it is. All right, and again, making sure the keel is down and clear. Now I'm going to bring the tips all the way together, like so. And now we've got a couple of pads that we're gonna be adding. Before I do that, we do not need these front cables. You can see they're loose anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect them right now. So pull that safety off. Remove the uh, nut here. Open up the swan catch. Remove this. Go ahead and just set that down. And I'll put the hardware back inside. Okay, let's get some pads. Okay, so there's more pads that are in the wing bag itself, but these are going to be loose. Um, this big one is kind of optional, but I'll show you where this one goes right now. Uh, we're going to go over the hang block itself. Okay, and that's going to go around the entire hang block. This is not necessary, but this one is. Uh, this goes around the back of the keel. And so we're going to just go ahead and pad this. And it's got a little Velcro on the bottom yeah, here. Yeah, Velcroed on. And now we can bring the wing all the way together. We don't have to worry about any uh, hardware touching any fabric. And then we're going to get the wing bag. Now the way you can tell the wing bag's front is the front of the wing bag has a little ID tag. And that's about it, because the back of the wing bag looks very, very similar. But if you reverse the wing bag, you're going to really fight with it. What I mean by that is the shape of this is not a tube. It's uh, bigger in the front and it's smaller in the back. And so you want to make sure that this goes down there and this goes up here. So because the front cables are off, we should be able to zip this up. Not all twisted. Yeah, if you have somebody to hold the front like Amy's doing, and just get it in place, then it makes it a lot easier to come back and, and zip it up. Uh, it's a great area to have a uh, helper. And as you're going, I'm reaching up and I'm bringing the top of the leading edges kind of together. And that's giving me some space so that I can zip this. It should not be overly tight. We bring this up and together. And we're gonna come down about as close as we can to the, uh, the down tube area. A little bit more. There we go. And now we'll go to the back of the wing. And there's also a strap right here that's connected. You want to pull that out as you're doing this. Yeah, that'll save you a few minutes of trying to figure it out through there. And I'm going to lift this I up now. Very important. The front cables 
are not doing their job because they're disconnected. So if I push this wing forward, the A-frame will collapse. We don't want to do that. So when I lift this, I can go straight up, I can go this way, but I can't go that way. So you lift this up, put it on your knee if you must. Another area where a second person to help you to zip. And once you get it there, again the same thing, I want to kind of bring the top of the leading edges together. That's going to help me to get enough space. And I'm zipping this all the way up. Now I'm going to have to unzip this once I roll it over. But this, and I'll just throw this in for now. Not doing anything except getting out of the way. We want to zip this up as much as we can. So I can roll this over. All right, now luckily, Wes Fry, one of our instructors, has come in and I'm gonna put him to work. There's Mr. Wes. Hey. He's gonna help Larry now. Right. I got fired, apparently. If you'll come on this side, I'm gonna to try to put it on an angle in this nice dry spot. We're gonna roll this onto its back. Now, I've got a pretty tough job. He's gonna take some of the weight. We're gonna to try to roll this over, but this A-frame is gonna be very, very sloppy and uh, hard to control. All right, so I'm putting the cable through my thumb, grab the wing, and now we're gonna to start to roll it over. I'm controlling the A-frame. Uh, go towards the orange stripe. All right, we're gonna just lay it on its back. All right. And then Wes, if I can and he's you. pulling the cables back Yeah, to I'm hold holding it. control of this because if I let go, this thing can twist and do all kinds of crazy things. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unzip my bag. The bag held everything together. You'll see what this does in just a minute. All right, and so now what we've got to do is we're going to disconnect the control bar just on one side, just on one side. And so that's going to push through. Now, when I pull this apart, things are going to get even crazier. So Wes has control of two tubes. I'm rotating this one. I'm going to leave this just kind of out to the side. I am going to put this hardware back in here. And I'm not going to put the safety on it, but the safety is tied right here. And then I'm going to take this, start bringing this down as well. Make sure that this doesn't crash into the hang block. You see it hitting here. So very important, I go outside the hang block and around. And I'm going to straighten this out a bit. Okay. Now one of the things I want to do is these down tubes that are back cut. They're not sharp, but they are metal, and I really don't want them uh, near this area. So what I'm gonna do to get them away, is untangle that, so I'm gonna slide this hang block forward by just simply pulling everything forward. I'm gonna move my padding back just a little bit. And now I've got the back cut section here protected. Also, I have another pad here, and this one is going to go this way. It's going to go on top or under the keel, at the bottom of the wing. So now we've got some good padding around this junction area here. I'm going to turn my tension equalizer sideways. And I'm going to bring my cables towards each other. Now this pad is very, very important also. This is gonna, we got the same thing, we get that back cut, we got all this hardware here. So this pad is super important. I'm bringing this control bar kind of in, okay? Now, making sure nothing's binding and everything's good. Take that hardware, these safeties, kind of put them here, bring this around and Velcro it together. Okay, now we got all that, those sharp bits are protected. We've got padding here. I'm left with this cable here. 
I can kind of roll this up and I can just place it in here if I like. It's a great place to kind of store some cables in here. Push them down this way. Make sure there's no kinks. And then uh, same thing here. You don't have to do, you see what's happening here, you don't have to do anything special with these cables. You can let them be just like this or you can go the other way, it doesn't matter. And I tend to like to kind of place that right there. Bring the bag together and zip. Okay, and we don't want to go too much further because we got more stuff to add to the bag. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and bag our two wing struts. And the reason I like to put the wing struts in the wing bag itself, I'm going to kind of separate these out in the bag. And what I actually do with this is I will place the control bar on top and in between and that really makes it nice and now I can unzip all the way put that in I can slide these down a little bit to the bottom and now we're going to place our battens on top of here before we zip it up all right so what we're going to do is I'm not going to do them this way. I'm going to try to do them this way. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get all the bends to line up. Easier said than done. When it starts to look like this, you might be able to get them in the bag in one shot. You might have a couple stragglers that aren't really lining up exactly. But that looks pretty good. And you just slowly bring them into the bag. This batten bag does a nice job of organizing. I think we got 46 or 48, I lose count, of some of these wings. And then, so that's the uppers. And then we've got the lowers. The lowers will go in the next pocket over, which is here. Those are a lot easier to get in. And then we do the uppers again. And this right here is the reason that we do not market this as a quick fold wing. Just way too many battens, way too much complexity for being built, you know, speedy and easy. And if you haven't seen our quick fold video, please look that up. Um, this is going on about an hour uh, or so. The quick fold wing is folded, ready to go in the trailer in six minutes. So quite a contrast. Once your battens are in, you start rolling the one without the Velcro tab, and it makes a complete revolution. I think I've got a twist in my Velcro, there it is. Bring it around, Velcro it, and now we're gonna place this all the way at the foot of the bag. And this can be turned again this way. We're going to zip right up to it. And that's it. We are bagged. This is the entire wing in a bag. Yep. So we got a couple of extra parts. So normally we just go ahead and put them in a saddle bag or into a box. Thanks for watching. And uh, that's our long pack.